Hi, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor at the University of Nevada, Reno. And today, I will be talking to you about titratable acidity. Titratable acidity, or TA, also called total acidity, is the measure of the total acid concentration of a wine. The two most important acids are tartaric and malic acids, malic acid being the primary one that we taste in a wine. Given that tartaric acid is the most abundant acid in a wine, titratable acidity is usually re reported in units of tartaric acid equivalents. This causes general confusion regarding the term titratable acidity, resulting in many inexperienced wine professionals mistaking titratable acidity for a measurement of tartaric acid content. Measurements of tartaric acid concentrations require more sophisticated methods than most wineries possess, usually chromatographic separation and quantitation by HPLC, DAD, or HPLC-MS. Titration is a technique where a conjugate base or acid is added to a solution containing acid or base respectively until the molecular equivalence point is reached. Since tartaric acid is a diprotic acid, neutralization requires two moles of sodium hydroxide for every mole of tartaric acid, hence the factor in our calculations at the end of this video. In a sense, when we sip a glass of wine, our mouth is performing a TA measurement through the effects of TA on saliva flow. Okay, let's get to it. We're going to do a titration here using a titration endpoint apparatus similar to what you see in the picture on the right. We are going to titrate an acidic wine of a pH of about 3.5 with sodium hydroxide and raise the pH to its endpoint, a pH of 8.2. Here are some items that you will need to do titratable acidity measurements. You will need a pH meter with ideally a temperature electrode. You're going to need sodium hydroxide in the concentration of 0.1 normal. And you're going to need a burette. In this case, it will be a 10 mil burette to measure titratable acidity in an accurate way. You need 0.1 or maybe even 0.01 normal sodium hydroxide to accurately measure the titratable acidity. In addition, it would be nice to have a stand that you can hold the pH meter and the burette um, and also a um, stir bar plate along with stir bars to be able to more easily make measurements of your titratable acidity. So to fill this burette, you want to make sure that the stopcock is not in the open position, but is in the closed position. And you can use a 5 mil disposable pipette, which is very nice and easy to work with, with a plastic bulb on it. And you want to fill that burette with your 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. So we're going to put it in to the top of the tube and fill it to the top until we get to the zero mark at the top. We want the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus, because this is a glass burette, it's going to curve. We want it to perfectly match the, cer the line where the zero is for easy calculations. So we are almost there. A couple more drops. And that bottom of the meniscus is right there at the bottom of the line. So we're going to start off our measurements by filling this beaker to about 100 mils with deionized distilled or distilled water.
This will be used to dilute our wine. The next thing you want to do is pipette five mils of your wine sample into the 100 mils of water. Here I am using an automatic pipetter that makes it very easy to measure out five mils, but you could do this with a mouth pipette as well. To start our pH measurements, we want to put our stir bar in our solution, and we want to get it turning. This ensures that the solution mixes very quickly and you get a more accurate measurement. We stick our pH meter probe in the solution and we measure the pH. In this case, we need to wait for it to come to stability, but the pH will be of a wine will be very acidic. When titrating, you want to go drop by drop. So you want to do this very slowly, one drop at a time, and watch the pH as it rises. If you go too fast or too quickly, you will overshoot the goal of shooting for 8.2. So you stop it, you let it mix, you let the pH stabilize, and then you raise that pH again. Now I dripped it too fast that time, so you want to do it on a slow drop until so you get there. And then I will look at the meniscus here and determine how much volume I've used to pipette into the wine to raise the pH from about 4. Often your wines can be about 3.5, pH of 3.5, and we're going to titrate it all the way to 8.2. And then we simply make a calculation of that volume of sodium hydroxide, which I'll show you in a moment. So this is how we make the titratable acidity calculations in terms of grams per liter of tartaric acid equivalents. First, we need to know the volume of our titrant used, which in this case was four milliliters. We need to know the concentration or the normality of our sodium hydroxide used, which was 0.1 normal. And we need to know the molecular mass of tartaric acid, which is 150.087 grams per mole. The equivalence factor was one mole tartaric acid for every two moles of sodium hydroxide. So this is a value of 0 0.5 and our volume of our wine sample, which was five mils. So when we multiply 4.4 mils times 0 0.1 normal times 150.087 grams per mole times 0 0.5 divided by five milliliters of wine sample, we get six grams per liter of tartaric acid equivalent, or ATA of six. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Please follow me on my YouTube channel. There are going to be other such videos. The next one will be about how to measure SO2 in your wine sample. Have a great day.